Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. There is a lot to catch up on and um, yeah, I'm going to just talk about a few things now. So, first of all, um, we will be having a look at this killer Sudoku today called Puna by Mavericks JD, who's brilliant. So I'm really looking forward to that. Comes highly recommended, interestingly. Um, we will, but first of all, what happened? Well, no, what's in the paper today? Well, there's this in the paper today. So let me just, um, there we go. Now, let me just see, there we go. This is an article about Simon, basically, called, um, I hated my job as an investment banker, so I turned my love for puzzles into a career. And uh, there's Simon and myself, and uh, it's basically a story about the, the genesis of the channel and um, the fact that puzzlers these days are getting younger. Some people think of uh, Sudoku and puzzles as stuff for retirees and so on, but no. And uh, there we go. That's in the, today's Daily Telegraph. I haven't actually checked the print copy to see um, what it looks like online, but... Um, delighted that they've featured Simon and that's you can look at it online I think it may be behind a paywall although the Daily Telegraph I suspect gives a few days of um, a few articles before the paywall applies so you may be able to read the whole thing there anyway um, now over the weekend it was the UK Sudoku Championship here are the results um, 18 competitors in Derby uh, in a face-to-face -face championship for the first time for three years. I was delighted that some of the first-time attenders had come to Variant Sudoku through Cracking the Cryptic. It was good to meet some people. And uh, very many congratulations to David McNeil, who has traditionally been a significantly better solver than me, so I really wasn't shocked to see him come first. Um, very well done to Tom Collier, who has also often beaten me over the years, and uh, he managed to get past me in round five and uh, come second. And even if I had put the last two digits in the odd even puzzle, which for some reason I left out, I don't think I'd have caught him. So very well done to Tom. Um, I was third. Now, the goal was, and well done to all the others, Michael Collins got over a thousand points as well, did very well, and Callum Mailer won the prize for the... Um, highest position for a first time entrant. But um, the goal was for me to get into the top two because that qualifies uh, automatically for a spot on the UK Sudoku team for the World Championship, which is happening later in this year, later this year, probably in the Toronto area. Um, however, David tells me that he won't be traveling and Tom tells me he, he will may well be participating in helping organize it and not competing. In which case, I think that the, uh, I think the way that the system works is that I will qualify. So job sort of done, although not quite in the manner that I was necessarily hoping for. Uh, that was followed by the Puzzles Championship. And uh, here are the results of that. Very well done to Neil Zussman, who is a pu pencil puzzler non pare well not quite non pare but he's of the people who turn up he is very likely to win um he is in the top 10 or 20 worldwide and a really really good pencil, pencil puzzler um and he just pipped tom again there and um well done matt white for coming third so those were the results from the uk puzzle championships really good to meet people again um, let me just get this back into position on the page, otherwise you won't be able to see where I'm putting digits in, etc. There we go. So that's what's gone on over the weekend. I'm reasonably happy with that result. I had hoped to stay on and take part in the puzzle challenge, but unfortunately the logistics of um, getting my son to his football militated against that, which meant that I drove back from Derby on the uh, Saturday night, only to find out about an hour after I'd got home, there was a text saying that the football on Sunday had been cancelled. And uh, by then I couldn't bear to drive all the way back to Derby to take part in the puzzle championship. So I gave it a miss. I mean, I would have, I would have come halfway down the field at best. So uh, it wouldn't have been that impressive. Now, that was what was going on at the weekend. That is all very good. What's been going on on Patreon, you're asking me? You're not, but I'm telling you anyway. So already up today, a revision 
to uh, the Nightmare Pack. There was one puzzle there with one pen one marking missing, uh, and it's in now. So if you if you had got to puzzle eighteen. My goodness, very well done, but you might want to try it again. If you hadn't got to it, don't worry, but make sure that you've downloaded the new pack before you try Puzzle 18. Um, it, it had a correction, and we're very grateful to Matt Boss for pointing it out. Uh, we had had four or five correct entries to the competition without worrying about that, which was quite interesting and shows how easy it was to miss the item. Um, but... It's also worth pointing out that one of the brilliant authors who has a brilliant puzzle in the pack is Mavericks JD, who is the constructor of today's puzzle. So if you enjoy this one, you will enjoy the Nightmare Pack. I think that's clearly a logical uh, sequitur. Um, and if it's not, don't blame me. So that is one thing on Patreon. Another thing on Patreon is that we've put up the last six solutions to the Alice in Sudoku Land pack that was March's monthly reward. We had already put up the first six shortly after the closing date. Um, Monty Knox, the constructor, has caught bronchitis, I'm sad to say, and was thus unable to create their videos for the pack. And uh, Panthera stepped in heroically and uh, got some done with Sudoku Hero. So thank you there. And those are now up on well they're for the three dollar a month patrons do join us on patreon if you haven't already as well as the monthly reward packs there are other things going on all the time on patreon and um it's well worth it now what else have we and in fact i think simon might be planning to what was he going to put on patreon he was going to put yes there was a solution path to the incredible puzzle he did on april fool's day it wasn't really an April Fool. I thought that the constructor F Jam put it very well in his comment on the puzzle on the video, which was that he hadn't submitted it to the channel because it didn't really follow the normal types of constraint we would require on puzzles for the channel. And that was accurate. But maybe there's one day a year when we can go and do something a little bit extra. And that was why I'd recommended it for Simon. I, you couldn't call it a prank. And by the way, Simon did send me a puzzle to try on April the 1st, and I tried it, and uh, I guess the joke was on me, because I couldn't work out what the rules meant. So that did not become a video, I'm afraid. And uh, although some of you will be clamouring to see that occurring, we don't put those up. It's, it's really not as much fun as you think to see us get stuck. And if you're in doubt about that, search out the video I did on Christmas Day about three years ago of a puzzle I didn't complete. Uh, the reaction was quite often, I thought I wanted to see this, but actually, no, don't do it again. <laughs> so we don't. Um, anyway, let's hope that doesn't happen with this puzzle by Mavericks JD, um, which is called Pune. I think Mavericks JD is Indian and Pune is a town in India, a uh, big city. Let's not just call it a town. And uh, I'm not sure if he's naming puzzles after cities or if there is some actual other connection, but that's what it's called. Do give it a try. It's just a killer Sudoku. So normal Sudoku rules apply. We're putting one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. In cages, digits can't repeat and they sum to the number shown and that's it. So if you've ever tried Killer Sudoku, you can understand the rules to this puzzle. Whether you can solve it might be slightly different because Mavericks JD is very cunning, very clever, and there'll almost certainly be a journey to be taken here to understand how the puzzle works. Um, I'm really looking forward to giving it a go. What else have I got to tell you? I can tell you about all our apps, which include a Killer Sudoku app. Do check out the links under the video. Um, that has got a lot of puzzles by authors often as brilliant as Mavericks JD, and there are some very entertaining ones in it, I have to say. So if you enjoy this one, that is actually your first port of call, maybe, even before joining us on Patreon. But um, what else? We've got merchandise. I don't know. That's it. Let's, let's have a look at this puzzle. I'm going to restart my clock and say the immortal words. Let's get cracking. So let's look at these cages. Right. There is one 
giveaway cage in the puzzle. And I, by that I mean we know exactly what its contents are. And that is this 16 cage. Now, long experience of Killer Sudoku has taught me um, quite a few things about cage sizes and numbers. And one of those things is that four cell 12 cages, of which we have a whole bundle in this puzzle, have two possible fills in terms of the digits you put in them and their combinations. They can be one, two, three, six, or one, two, four, five. And that is very much at the forefront of my brain. Now, I think a five cell 33 cage has also only two possible fills, although I have to do that in a slightly different way in my head. I know that a five cell 35 cage is the maximum. Um, therefore, a five cell 34 cage, a bit like a five cell 16 cage, which is one away from the maximum. If this was a five cell 34 cage, it would only have one possible fill, which would be nine, eight, seven, six, and then not five, but four to make the maths work. But when you get down one number below that, then there are two possible fills. It's much the same when you're going up from the minimum fill for a, a four cell cage. The minimum fill is 10. 11 only has one combination of digits, but then 12 has two. And similarly, 33 has two, which must be 98763 and 98754. But 16 only has one. This is made up of one, two, three, four, six. So I'm never afraid to do maximal pencil marking. So the other cells in the box are five, seven, eight, and nine. Right, we've got X wings. Okay, an X wing is where we use up both of the digits in a row, in a pair of rows or columns, basically. That's, is that a reasonable definition of it? I think it is. And this 12 cage, as I think I mentioned, has two possible fills, one, two, three, six, and one, two, four, five. Now the common digits there are one and two. Yeah, I mean, if I was going to depict that properly in terms of corner marks and center marks, I'd put those digits in. So one, two, three, four, five, six are the possible digits in each cell. One and two are the necessary digits within these positions in this cage. Similarly here, one, two, well, I mean, all of those digits are necessary, actually. So the point is one and two are definitely being used twice in these. And what that's telling us is those are the only uses of them in rows one and two. So these other cells cannot contain ones and twos. That gives us a minimum fill for this of 18, which is not enough, but we're not done yet. If these cells contain two lots of one and two, well, it implies that all these cells don't contain one and two because they're in the same boxes with these ones and twos. And therefore, in this row, the one and two are in these cells. But what's really interesting is that there is another digit Actually, we can do much better, yes. This can't be a one, two, three, six fill because all of one, two, three, and six would be X-winged out of these cells and have to fit into these. And that's too many digits to fit into those cells. So if you had one, two, three, six in that group of four, they'd also appear here. They couldn't be in any of these cells and you'd have to fit all of one, two, three, six in row three into those three cells. Well, you can't do it. You cannot cram four cells, uh, four numbers into three cells. It is impossible. So this is actually proved now to be a one, two, four, five cage. And now we know that one, two, and four are X-winged in these two cages. So this group of cells is a one, two, four group, and that is definite. Um, I guess in this row, three and six are in this group. I don't know if that's helpful. Um, ah, this cage now cannot contain any of one, two and four. I'm getting interested now. 
sorry, I am taking the opportunity to solve in a slightly more leisurely fashion than I was able to on Saturday when racing against the clock the whole time. So forgive me if I go too slowly in my thinking, but it's also a much more complex problem than we were normally presented with in the UK Sudoku Championship. Anyway, one, two, and four are used in those cells in box two and in those cells in box one. So they're not in this cage. Now, the minimum digits that could go in that now are three, five, six, and seven. What do they add up to? 21. So we have more than minimum here, but we can't increase the three because then we'd have five, six, seven, eight, which add up to 26, that's far too much. So we have to have a 3 in this cage. Oh, it won't be in that cell because 3 and 6 in this box are in those. Now, do we have to have a 5 in the cage, which would be quite interesting. Um, if we didn't, it would be 3, 6, 7, 8 at the minimum, which is 24. Too much. So yes, we do have a 5 in the cage. And now we have a five in that cage and a five in this cage. And although there's an overlap in terms of boxes, actually we know that that's not a five as well. Five must be in those cells because in this box, five is in one of those. So we've got a three and a five, which adds up to eight. The other two add up to 15 and are from six, seven, eight, nine. This cell can't be a six either. So it's seven, eight or nine. Actually, that must be 7, 8 or 9 as well, because in this box, 1, 2, 4, 5 are in those cells. 3 and 6 are confined to those. Uh, these two must therefore be from 7, 8, 9. This can't be a 5, I have noticed as well, because we've got one 5 there in rows 1 and 2 and the other one here. So that can't be, and there is a 5 in those cells. Um... But I think we've run out of information at that point. I'm going to have to find out something else about the puzzle in a moment. Because I, I was wondering if this would give me more. Ah, oh, look, the, the pattern is very interesting here, isn't it? Look at that little pattern of cells that add up to 45, that occupy all but two cells of the box five and two outside it. And it's replicated here. And I, this has to be significant in some way. Especially as these 12s, right. It's, okay. The, I don't know what what's going on here. Something's going on here. The 12 has a one and a two in it. The 33 has a nine, eight and seven in. Oh, this cell sees them all. Yes, okay, what I've just said matters then, a bit. This cell sees all of these cells in the same box and those two. So it can't have a digit that is in either of those cages. So it can't have one or two, it can't have seven, eight or nine. So this is three, four, five or six. And whatever it is, whatever it is doesn't appear in the 33 cage and doesn't appear in the 12 cage. The, the sort of loose digits. One and two are fixed digits. We know they're in the 12 cage, but the other two are either a three, six pair or a four, five pair. In the 33 cage, nine, eight, seven are the fixed digits and the other two are either a three, six pair or a four, five pair, the same two pairs. So this digit, whatever it is, it's from three, four, five, and six, but it doesn't appear in this cage and it doesn't appear in this cage. So the loose digits, the three, six, or the four, five, 
must be the same in both cages. Imagine, imagine this is a three. I don't know if it is, but if that's a three, this can't have a three in it. It must be nine, eight, seven, five, four. This can't have a three in it. It must be one, two, four, five. And therefore, if that was a three, these seven digits would share one, two, four, five, seven, eight, nine, and this would become a six if that's a three. And that must work, yes, because three, six, and four, five are both pairs that add up to nine, the other member of their pair is going to be here. So this pair is going to add up to nine. So that is three, four, five, or six as well. And this pair is going to be the pair that doesn't form the loose pair, to use a term I have just made up this moment, in, in these boxes, cages. But I don't know what it is, which is frustrating. But there you go, sometimes this... Now I do know what it is. Oh, that's fantastic. Look, 789 in this box... Where does 789 go now? Now we know they're not in those cells. We know they can't be in the 12 cage. 789 in the box are in the 33 cage. 1 and 2 in the box are not in the 33 cage. They're in the 12 cage. So this digit, this, this is the importance of that, is not 7, 8 or 9. Because they're in these cells in the 33 cage as well as in the 5 box. So this is not 7, 8 or 9. It's also not 5 or 4, because they appear somewhere else in row 3. So this digit is... I mean, we knew that 3 and 6 were confined to those three cells, slightly unsurprisingly, but very helpfully, we now know that this cell is either 3 or 6. And why is that very helpful? I think it means that this cannot be a 3 or 6. Yes, because the other digit from 3 and 6 is going to be in this cage. And now this pair that adds up to 9 cannot be a 3, 6 pair. That is a 4, 5 pair. So this is a 1, 2, 3, 6 cage. And that is 3 or 6 because 1 and 2 are in that box. So the cages are looking very busy in terms of the pencil marks, but I know what's going on. And we've got these 4, 5s. Now, what does that tell us? Does that tell us this is the same? Because we've got, this is the same shape, although the 12 cage is on top this time. This shape is the same shape. And to go through the deductions one by one, this cell sees all of these digits. So it must see a 1 and a 2 in the 12 cage and a 7, 8, 9 in the 33 cage. So it is 3, 4, 5 or 6. Whichever digit it is, is part of the loose pair that are not in the 12 cage and not in the 33 cage and therefore occupy these two cells in, the, in box 9. So it's exactly the same deal as here. Now, I don't know that I can make them both 4 fives at this point, but it's possible. What? I had more information about this little, no, this little tip of the box because I knew it couldn't be a 4 or a 5. I don't have that about this. Oh, I've got either a 3 or a 6 there, and either a 4 or a 5 there. I do know that these sticky out things are 3, 4, 5 or 6, because again I know that 1 and 2 must be in those cells, 7, 8 and 9 must be in those, and then one of the shared loose pair digits is there, and the other is there. So these two actually add up to 9 as well, just as those two must do. But, yes! Yes, that is, that's brilliant, right. That does work. They can't be a 4-5 pair. Oh, it's the other way round now, because of this cell. Right, I don't know whether this digit is a 4 or a 5, but it's one of them. And therefore, it can't be either of those digits. So they can't be a, a 4 5 pair, because whatever that is, is breaking the 4 5 pairness of those digits. Uh, this is a terrible way of explaining what I'm seeing here. Oh, okay, the. 
Yeah, the simple way is these two cage. Well, the simpler way. These two cages contain both of them. Either contain three six or four five. If they both contained four five, this box could only contain one four and one five. So these two cells would have to contain one four and one five. And that would provide a clash. Like, if you imagine either way around putting 4 and 5 in those, you can't fill that. So they're not 4, 5. Those are 3, 6. And now it is 3 and 6 that cannot be in these cells because this one sees both a 3 and a 6. So we've got a 4, 5 pair here, and we're not going to get 3 in the corner. We're going to get 4 or 5 in the corner. So actually we have mirrored what was going on here. That's so weird. I kept thinking we were doing the opposite, but we're not, we've done the same. Right, this 33 cage. <laughs> this again, this is the sort of other 33 cage. It's not, it's not the ones in the yellow and purple patterns. Let's give it a color, let's make it green. Um, this 33 cage, the green one, is either 987, Six three or nine eight seven five four, but look at that cell. That proves it's in the same box as all of these cells, so it can't be nine eight seven six three, or you couldn't fill that. So this is nine eight seven five four. These are from one two three six. Assuming I've got this right, I think I have. I'm just going to go through this logic again. That sticking out had to be four, three four five or six but couldn't be four or five. I think that's absolutely solid. So it is three or six, and that's three or six. That's a four or five pair. Once that's a four or five pair, those are three and six, and that's a four or five pair. I'm solid. It's right. It's right. Okay. Ah, oh, but look, that is a three, six pair in the column that I hadn't seen, that I could have done a little while ago, but that's quite nice because none of those cells now can contain three, six. In fact, now we've got a seven, eight, nine pair in the column. So that can't be seven, eight, nine. And we've got a four, five pair, a three, six pair, a seven, eight, nine triple, which I may have just called a pair. And these last two must be a one, two pair. So we don't have four or five there. Is that helpful? Don't know. Here we've got one of one, two and one of three, six. Oh, we've got a four, five pair there. So these don't contain four, five. One of those is four, five, whichever digit isn't that one. And that's forming a pair with that cell. So this one at the top can't be four, five either. That's a virtual pair. So now we've got a one, two pair up here. These and those can't have a one or a two in. We've got a four, five pair here. And those are the positions of the four, five pairs in columns four, five and six. I can see from that four, five pair that this nine cage Ah, the nine cage isn't a four five pair, and because of that it's not a three six pair, so it's either one eight or two seven. Okay, where do no yes. How many of these are one or two? And the answer is only one because that is one or two. And one of these has to be one or two because we have three ones and twos to put in these cells, but only one of them, so this is definitely one or two. And that is forming a one-two pair with one of these cells. Ah. This is gonna have to, there's, there's a clearer way of seeing this, right. In this column, where do three and six go? That's the simpler way, maybe, of seeing this. Only one of them can go here because we've already got one in this cage. And the other three or six has to go here. So this cell is not three or six, it's seven, eight or nine. One of those is three, and three or six and one of those.
Hmm, not really progressing much now. Might have to start colouring digits, but I'm going to be very, I'm going to have to be very careful on selecting how to colour digits. Let's just have a look here. 26 plus 14 is 40, plus 9, 49. Compare that with the 45 total for this cage, for this box, and that cell must be 4 higher than that one. Yeah, I don't know. That's not all that helpful to me at the moment. I might come back to thinking about that. Ah, this is a 1236 box. Oh, look at that. There we go. 12346 quintuple in the final column. In fact, there's only. No, I was going to say there's only one of them that can be a 4. That's not true. But 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 quintuple tells us that this is not a 4. That is a 5. That's a 4. That's a 5. That's a 4. That's a 5. There's no 5 here. One of those two is a 4. That's not a 5. One of those two is a 5. What else have we got? We've got that 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 quintuple. So these are from 7, 8, 9. Oh, look. Look at this 13 cage. What are the minima that can go in there? 5 and 7, 12. That only leaves one possible fill there. So we can do this whole cage. 5, 1, 7. Brilliant. Right, 7. That's not a 5. One of these two is a 7 in this box. So those don't have a 7. One of those two is a 7. Okay, this is fascinating. I have a feeling this may not be the only way of doing this puzzle, but it's the way I'm doing it. Look, those cells can't contain a 4 because of these 4s that we've placed, so we can put 4 in this box. Now, none of these can be a 4. That can't be a 1. That can't be a 1. Here's a 2, 3, 6 triple. So the remaining ones in this column are from 7, 8, 9. I think pencil marking really might be the way forward in this puzzle. One of these is a 3 or a 6. Mm, and is the same as that digit. Got an 8, 9 pair here. So these are from 2, 3, 5, 6. And they must include 2 and 5. That's not a 2. In fact, that's not a 1. There is a 1 in those cells. There's a 1 here, and that's where 1 is in box 3. 2 is in one of those two cells. Hmm, not interesting. Um, what else? Oh look, that 1 can't be in either of those cells, but this 12 cage needs a 1, which must now be... I'm marking across boxes, which is dangerous, but it's in one of those two. Those can't have 7s in. Um... Mm, don't know quite what it means. For this to be a 1, 2, 3, 6 cage, there would be a 4 here. That doesn't get anything done. There is a 7 here. There is a 7 in one of these two cells. That's not a 5. I've got 4, 7, 8, 9 quad there. Fives in one of those two cells. I'll tell you what's slightly interesting about that is they both see that cell. One in the column and one in the cage. So that can't be a five but unfortunately that doesn't quite prove anything because five still has two places possible in the row.
Um, no, come on. What's next? There's a four there. Listen, I'm not learning anything new at the top, I don't think. One of these is seven, eight, or nine, and is the same as that one. And that one. It's in those cells. Um, and it must be in one of those two. Now, I need to do some work on some other cage that I haven't considered properly. It's almost, well, it's got to be in columns one and two, doesn't it? One, two, four, three, five. Of course, now that makes me just look in box one to see if I'm missing something obvious there. Now, I worked out that that was five more than that cell. No, four more than that cell. 26, 40, 49 compared with 45 is a difference of four. That is four more than this cell. Which is therefore one, two, three, four, or five. Now, if that was a three, five pair, that would be really helpful. In fact, no, I'm starting to ask where does seven, eight, nine go in this column, but only one of them can be in the top box and one of them in the bottom box, but that does allow a little bit of leeway in the middle one. It's some sort of question like that that I still need to be asking now. Or, or do I need to be considering that that is a 3-6 pair? Oh, and that is a 3-6 pair. Oh, let's track the, let's get rid of these colours and let's track three and six around the grid. We've kind of used those that we put in before fully. I didn't really use them for much, but let's go purple green with the various three sixes because we know that in these weird shaped regions, these end tips are different. So that's green, that's purple, that's green. Now, green is going to be in one of those cells. Purple. Purple is going to be one of these two, isn't it? Yeah, look, of course, sorry. It's just perfectly simple. There's a three, six pair in that row. So that can't be three or six. And this, therefore, is three or six and is indeed purple by the new scheme. Now, am I, I'm presumably missing an equivalence in a column somewhere. I don't know that I am. Now, that's interesting. It almost puts purple in the cage, but this is either, yes, either we've worked out before that there's a four in one of those three cells. To avoid being in the cage, it has to be there. The same is true for purple. To avoid being in the cage, it has to be there. Now, either three, four, or six does, inv does avoid being in the cage, because it can't have all of them. So that cell becomes three, four, or six. Which is a slightly strange juxtaposition. I cannot colour it, because I don't know that it's a three, six. That's a three, six. Yes, in this column, uh, no. But in this column, where does purple go? It can't go there because it's in the same cage as purple. So it's in one of those two cells. Green is in one of those. Purple in this column is in one of those two. Um... I feel, yes, one of these is another three or six and is green. That doesn't, and it's not there. So it's one of those two. So that is not three or six because of, oh, look, I've got a one, two and a three, six pair all looking at that cell. So it's obviously a five. Why can't I tell that? 
This is why I didn't do as well as I wanted at the Sudoku Championship. So one of those is a two. One of five, five. Hmm, one of these is a five. One of these is purple, which is a three or six. Could green be there? Yes, it could, definitely. I'm beginning to get the feeling that doing this colouring wasn't actually any use, which is annoying. If I could state that green, there had to be exactly one green or purple in this 14 cage, that might be interesting. I don't think I can get to that conclusion at all, or indeed anything like it. Um, Oh, no, I was about to say there has to be... Right. Got it. Got it. This cage either has green and purple in it or neither, because it's either 1, 2, 3, 6 or 1, 2, 4, 5. This goes back to the concept of loose digits that I came up with earlier. Well, look, there isn't a cell in it that can be green. Therefore, it doesn't have green and purple. And therefore, purple is here and is three or six. But much more importantly, this cage doesn't have three or six. It's a one, two, four, five cage. We can tell where five goes. That tells us where one goes. And this is now a two, four pair. And that might give me a bit of traction on the puzzle. Now I can place five down here. That's not a five. One of these two is a definite five. How about green and purple? Oh, they're not going brilliantly. Green is in one of those cells and purple one of those five. Oh look, these can't have a three in because they see both green and purple, which are a three six pair. So the three in this cage, which I think we determined had to be in it from the total, has to be here. Right, so they don't have a three in. Now, that could still be purple if it was six. Let's just get rid of the corner marks there. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of the corner marks in that box because they're just clogging things up and here and there. Right. Um, now, three plus five plus another pair that adds up to 15 to make 23. But it can't be 6-9, because that would be the 9. You'd have to put a 6 here, and that would clash with the 3-6 pair. So it's 3-5-7-8 in this box. Um, so that's 7 or 8. Ah. So down here, where does that digit... Okay, I'm needing more colours. Let's go orange. And those can't be that orange 7 or 8. It's got to be here. So that is not a 9. The orange seven or eight is in one of those two. I haven't got much to go on for those, so let's hold off on that for a moment. I was, oh no, I've got something here. That's a blue seven or eight being the other type, the other flavor of seven or eight. And look, the orange seven or eight is in one of these two cells and it can't be there because orange would clash with orange. So orange is here and is the higher digit. The one or two is there. And whatever that is goes into this cage and it must go in here. So purple is there. Now green is in one of those two. And what that gives me is green over here. That's mad. That's so interesting. Now one of these two is green. It doesn't have to be this three that we've got written in the grid because it could be a six here. What's purple up to? Don't know. Ooh, do I know? I don't think so. One of those is purple. Oh, and that's an X-wing on purples. So now one of these two is purple. I don't know which one, but I do know that this cage has either a three or a six in it. Which feels weird as information. So it could be five, six, seven, eight or five, 
three. No, it can't be a three. There we go. We've disambiguated purple and green this way. That's bizarre. If purple was a three, we'd have a three and a five. That's eight. Plus two other cells to make 26 would require them both to be nine. And that's not happening. So purple is a six. I don't know which cell it's in, but purple is a six. So let's make all of these cells that we have as definite purples sixes. We'll make all the definite greens threes. And I feel like we've made significant progress. So that's now definite green because it is a three. That's the definition. This, no, I don't know. One of those, well, they can't be sixes now. One of them is green, one of these is green, one of these is green, and one of these is green. Oh, how do I not have any better handle on greenness? Irritating. Um, what about purples? One of those is the purple six. One of those is one of those is one of these, and <laughs> something up in the corner roughly. Oh, I don't know. Right, but this, okay, let's use the cage numbers, right. Five and six is 11, plus 15. This is a five, six, seven, eight cage, so we don't have any repeats. So that is seven or eight, which is either orange or blue. We'll come back to that. This is six, seven, or eight. Okay, that involves both purple six and non-orange seven or eight, which is blue. So this is not blue, because it's in the same cage. It's orange. So one of these two is orange. Don't know whether it's seven or eight. One of these two is orange. One of these two is orange. So that fixes where orange is down here. It's there, so that's not a nine. Okay, come on, let's do blue then, since we didn't get very far with orange. Right, that sees both blue and orange, seven and eight, so that's a nine. Now, blue is down here, looking north. Does that nine get us anything else? Absolutely not. And then one of these two is blue. Something in that box. Oh, why aren't you more helpful, blue? Right, we've got a six, seven, eight triple. Three and five, so that can't be three and five. These include a nine, because there's nowhere else for it to go in the box. So that's a nine two pair to make the total in the cage work. That's a two X wing. That uses up the twos in columns one and two, and that has to be a four. Now that might be helpful. We get two, two, four, two, nine. We're getting more nines than we can shake sticks at now. Nine I can place in box four. One of those twos are nine. Let's keep going with nines. One of those two, I think it's about to peter out. One of those two. And one of these three, one of those two, yeah, nines petered out, never mind about nines. That can't be a one, because it sees a one, two pair. So it's seven or eight, we've already got nine in the box. In fact, we know the color, blue. So that gives us blue here. And that is the purple six. This has become a nine, because it's got a seven, eight pair in the a row, that's an eight, that's a nine. Still don't know, one of these is obviously orange and the other one is blue now. Um, same here, one orange, one blue. That must be blue by the same reasoning and is therefore not nine. And we've placed nine in this box. We might have got all the nines in the grid. We have now, I think, because we get that one and one in the corner. There we go. No song for you, but you are placed. Now, those don't have a six. That's a two, three pair. In this column, this is the six at the bottom. So those two aren't purple at all. Those two definitely are. And that's a six as well. And I think we may have... No, not quite. Yeah, we can place six in box one and then we can place it in box three. So let's fix the colouring there. That loses its colour and becomes a two. 
this is for oh, this whole box. No, not the seven eight pair, but everything else about the box is unwound. And we do get three in the corner. That's three in the corner. Losing its religion. And uh, we get a three down here and a one two pair. This is such a clever puzzle. It just keeps its secrets. This is a one to finish the box. That is seven or eight. It gets a color. That color is orange. That looks across here. Uh, we need another blue. It's not there, so that's five. This is blue being seven or eight. The last act in this puzzle, I think, will be to unwind the sevens and eights. And that's blue. We're going to color them all first. Come heck or high water. Uh, that loses its colour. This becomes blue, so it's not four. That's four. This one, we must know, is one or two. In fact, it's a one. It's naked now. So that is going to let us do an awful lot of ones and twos, probably all the remaining ones. Um, yes, I think so. Oh, look, and this is where we're finally going to find out how to do the sevens and eights in that cage. But let me just finish off this box first. They can't have a six. We are looking for three, seven, eight, and nine. Oh, I can do this three, two pair. Let's... Oh, what was green? Oh, green was three. Okay, so that's three. Those two can go fully green. These two can lose their colors entirely. Uh, this is not three, it's an eight, part of an eight, nine pair. That's seven. And then we're going to get an eight, nine pair still to disambiguate. No, we've got the eight and the nine done. Right, so let's make those orange and blue too. Now, this is going to disambiguate the sevens and eights because orange becomes an eight. Let's uh, not worry about those two because we've actually got the numbers. Right, but I can now highlight this and all the orange cells, and they're all eight. And then I can finish off by highlighting all the blue cells, and they're all seven. And that is the solution. There we go. That is a fantastic puzzle. That, I mean, it's taken me 42 minutes for a, a killer Sudoku. And it had these lovely ideas about these loose digits that, that were shared in these strange shapes by the two cages. Ah, so clever. I, I really enjoyed that, as so often with, um, with Maverick's JD's puzzles. Really good constructor. Um, and there we go. That is the solution to Puna. I uh, hope you had a go at it, and I uh, hope to see you again soon on the channel. Thanks, as always, for watching, and bye for now.